Okay, so this is just a brief lesson on rate laws. And when we talk about rate laws, what we're looking at is how does the concentration affect the reaction rate? So in other words, if I have you know a solution that's heavily concentrated, is that going to react any any faster than a solution that is very dilute? Or vice versa. So does the concentration affect the reaction rate? And if so, by how much and to what extent? And what's an equation that we can derive um, that we can use? So suppose we have this reaction scheme. A becomes products. Here we have just one reactant, A. This is just for simplicity. Now it turns out that the rate of this reaction, provided that the reverse reaction, if any, is negligibly, neg negligibly <laughs> slow, I can't pronounce that today, it turns out that the rate is proportional to the concentration of A raised to a power. So this sign means is proportional to the concentration of A raised to the power. Now this power is what we call the reaction order. So we say that the reaction is in, in order with respect to A. Another way to express this proportionality here is we can get rid of this proportional sign and basically turn it into an equal sign by saying that the rate is equal to the concentration of A raised to its order times a constant of nature that we'll call K. This constant is what we call the rate constant. So here you have it. Rate equals K times the concentration of A to the N power. Now let's explore some of the values of N that we can have. Suppose that n is equal to 0. If n is equal to 0, then that means that the rate is going to be equal to k times the concentration of a to the 0 power. And of course anything to the 0 power is 1, so that means this is just going to be equal to k. We call this a zero order reaction. So zero order reactions are interesting because the rate of the reaction doesn't depend on the concentration of the reactant at all, provided that there's at least some of it around you know, to react. So you can have a very, very concentrated solution or a very, very dilute solution. It doesn't matter if you have a zero order reaction, the rate is going to be the same virtually no matter what. Now, if n equals 1, you have that the rate is equal to k times the concentration of a to the first power, or simply k times the concentration of a. That means that the rate of the reaction is proportional to the concentration of a. So that means as that means that the more concentrated my reactant is, the faster the rate will be. It's directly proportional. And if n equals 2, the rate is going to be equal k times the concentration of a squared.
That means that the rate of the reaction is actually proportional to the square of the concentration of the reactant. So that's a little outside the box to think about, but this is what we call zero order, first order, and second order reactions. Also, I should note that the n, the value of n, the order with respect to this reactant here, A, doesn't necessarily have to be an integer. It can also be a fraction. It could be negative, it could be like the square root of something, or you know, the cube root of something, or something like that. So this doesn't necessarily have to be just 0, 1, and 2, 3, etc. It can also be fractions and negative, negative exponents. So, another property of these reactions suppose we have A plus B yields products so this means that I have two reactants now, A and B. Well, to express the rate law for this reaction, we're going to say that the rate is equal to the concentration of A, excuse me, K times the concentration of A to the M times the concentration of B to the N. So let's say that the reaction is first order with respect to A and second order with respect to B. This is how the rate law would work. There's another thing that we call the overall order of the reaction. And it turns out that the overall order of this reaction would be M plus N, which in this case is 1 and 2, which is equal to 3. So the overall reaction order is the sum of the orders of the individual reactants. So that's it.